attacked by a Karen this week, you said. So not entirely attacked, okay, I would okay. say, but I had a, a, a little bit of a Karen encounter. You had a run-in or Karen encounter. That's good. Yes. That's good. I like that. What's a Karen? So a Karen, in my opinion, would probably be a very small percentage, very small percentage. If you're listening to this, you are probably not a Karen. Very small percentage of older women, probably in the f- age 50 to upper range and they are usually on camera in some store in some public setting in front of a ton of people losing their mind and not just like no 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 i want this like screaming see freaking all out. i have seen are the karen memes and 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 the karen freakouts i call them yes where like you said they're in a store and then i see other things labeled as karens like, yeah like i see young people y- young women because of the name karen obviously young women with freakouts, uh, you know and that kind of thing who are labeled as karen so it's like is it is it is your action is what you're doing is what call calls makes you a karen what's the deal i think I think what it is is basically that I, I read a definition of this actually after my weird experience on Sunday. So it's basically, I don't want to bring race into it, but it's usually a white female that feels entitled to something. Okay. And when she does not get that thing, rather than aggressively, kindly going after, hey, you did me wrong. She starts screaming and it just goes up, kind of like almost incoherent and start attacking. So because right before we started filming, I was on TikTok and it was a video of the video literally said a Karen freaking at airport. You didn't even watch it. Mm. And you said, oh, is that a Karen video? Yeah, because because I heard yeah. it. So yeah. maybe we do we want to so talk what about what happened to you. The thing is, you you thought this was a Karen okay. incident. So what yeah. happened to you? And then we can kind of figure it out. Like what happened? She was th- this this was way less aggressive. So I went to okay. go f- I went to go film a wedding at a park, and I Im- immediately show up. I get to the gate, and well, it's actually technically two Karens, and I show up, and I'm like, hey, I'm uh, here for a wedding. And then the one person looks at me. She's like, you still got to pay. So you, you, I'm like, okay, hold on. I need to know that because I'm the photographer. Okay. And then her other Karen friend comes in. Oh God, we charge photographers $25 instead of $7. I'm sorry. I didn't say photographer. I said videographer. They have a rule for photography that if you come in, it's nowhere on their website, but they just said it. If you come in there and take photos, it's going to be $25. And I said, hold on. I need to talk to my people because I was told nothing about this. Because like I said... You're getting, okay, you're getting paid I was, to do the wedding. Yes. So they're going to charge someone who's getting paid to do yes. the wedding to attend the wedding. And there's no rules. There's no anything that says that. It doesn't say that anywhere on the website. So I say, hold on. I need to call these people and figure this out because I I don't know what to do here. So I turn around and I get back in the line. I call my friend. He's like, dude, we'll take care of it. We've got it covered. So I get back with her and I say, just to be clear, there's no distinction because that's what I do with Karens and aggressive people. I look them straight in the eyes and I just get straight to the truth. Just to be clear, there's no distinction between videography and photography because this is two totally different things. No, there's not. Okay. And she's like, I'm like, well, here's my car. And she's like, She's like, they're not going to do it. I'm like, no, I have to pay for this. And so I'm once again, yeah. aggressively, kindly confronting the situation, being like, no, I've got to pay for this. And they were apologetic and it was fine and we did it. So I was just there all day and my friend who was the actual photographer gets in to the event, but she doesn't say she's a photographer. She just gets on in. So for me being honest and telling the truth, I got charged $25 for some rule that's not written anywhere. That rubbed me the wrong way. So I get back over through the gate, and then I call them later in the day. And she's like, and I'm like, look, I didn't take any photos. I took a couple things on my iPhone. But she's like, where are you going to, and this is what made her mad. On the, this is on the phone after I'm 25 minutes away. Um, uh, she was like, well, did you, did you take, you took photos though. And they're going to be distributed online, correct? And I was like, yeah, but I'm the only one who got tw- charged $25 while everyone at the wedding was taking photos, so I feel singled out. And you're not going to charge everyone else $25. She's 
she did not like that. So she goes, okay, here's what I'm going to do. And she was not happy about it. She's like, this cannot happen again, but I'm going to give you the refund. I'm like, great, let's do it over the phone. She's like, nope, you got to come back in person. So I drive all the way back. Oh my gosh. I get the refund because what I t- initially, when I started the phone conversation with her, I know this is a long story. I like to come in with a threat of what I'm going to do. Hey, I'm not happy with how this went, so I'm going to dispute this charge on Chase Bank. When you dispute a charge with like a local business, you're going to win. That's just how it is. It's like an ACH thing. For future reference for everybody out there, dispute the charges. You win. Well, no, no. You got to... It's <laughs> But it's very hard to... If it's a valid If claim, it's a valid it's thing valid, and for something like yeah. this, it's totally... It's a gate charge. Like there's no yeah. cameras or anything. Anyway, so I go back and I... Uh, She's just not happy. Like she's looking at me like death because this woman has never been confronted in her life where she's had to fight dudes like me. And I probably remind her of her husband or whatever. So initially she gives me the refund, but I spent a lot of gas money going out there. So I dispute the charge on Chase. Yeah. So I got the refund. And that. So the closest thing that I've come to of encountering a Karen, I think in my opinion that I can remember that stands out yeah. is a dude. It was an older dude. Uh, let me run the scenario. So, uh, where, where I live, there's a post office and a bank that share a driveway almost like the post office is on this side of the driveway. The bank's on this side of the driveway. Me, me and a friend of mine were in his car. We pull up, he's got to go to the post office and I'm in the passenger seat. So he pulls into the post office and the post office parking lot is like, if you pull in and stop right there without pulling into a parking space, you can't really get around the car. Like you're, you're blocking some people. Yeah. So he pulls up in front of the post office and says, are you going to go to the bank? I said, yeah. When you go to the post office, I'll just run to the bank. He's like, okay. So he gets out. I get out the passenger side and I physically run to the bank. I run to, because it's, it's right there. They share a driveway. So I just yeah. run to the bank. I'm going to go in. He thought I was going to go around, get in the driver's seat, drive the car around to the bank. Yeah. So he left the car there running in the middle of the parking lot so nobody could get around it Hmm. so he goes in the post office uh, and i'm I'm trying to like if you can visualize it we drive into the post office he gets out does not see me just run because he's beelining to the post office he doesn't see me run to the bank i don't see him leave the car yeah he leaves the car there i come out the car's still there and a guy is pulled up behind it stopped waiting because he can't get past the car so i walk to the car and he goes is this your car and i go no but i know whose it is <laughs> you know he's like and i, and I can move he's like well, why what the? and he starts cussing me a blue streak what are you thinking leaving your car like this and i was, and I was like tr- at first i tried to explain we it was a misunderstanding blah, 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 like just going berserk yeah i don't know if this was the correct response but i have been wanting to do this for so long, this is all I could do. My response to him, he's coming at me. He doesn't have any violence in mind, I don't think. But he's just like, why are you blah, 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 blah. Just this, and it's Yosemite Sam, you know, the veins bulging, red face, spit flying. What was the age? Uh, he had a gray mustache. So okay. 50s, okay. let's say. Okay. Um, what are you doing, blah, blah, blah. This is my response. This is the only thing I could do. I didn't know what to do. I didn't think reason or rationale was going to work. So I just simply went <laughs> like that. <and> I, <laughs> just in the door of the car. I what just, did he do? And he goes, <laughs> and he like freaked out and backed up. And I was like, <laughs> I just, he was like, oh, and I just was like, <laughs> like this at him and got in the car and drove it and parked it. So <laughs> I dude, don't know if that's, that's ama- No, that's response. great. Dude, you de-escalated the situation. You know what I would have done? I probably, I probably would have close to fought the dude because I have some bad tendencies that I need to work on, and I wouldn't have hit the dude, but I definitely would have gotten in his face. That is the most aggressive. Like what I would have done is stupid and non-aggressive. That is. <laughs> so my- Do that one more time. <laughs> I mean, well, can I, 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 came, I, I came, I did everything okay. but lift my shirt and get naked and just be like, ah, you know what I'm saying? In front of- Gosh. <laughs> I have a friend who was in college and her car broke down at my apartment and they called her dad and her dad was furious. 
And this dude was probably was the furious same because her car broke because her car broke down. But this dad was, I would probably say, the same type of range. The dude showed up as angry looking as possible, and he just starts cussing a storm left and right. And do you know the size of this dude? No, no, he was like he was he was a small dude. Of course, right. yeah. But I call that little man syndrome. Yes, but also come to find out, and they won't listen to this, but this was like some type of a secret. Him and his wife are swingers. It's well known within the family. Wow. The kids know it, and they Joel, go. This and do is these not things. that kind of show, bro. The thing is, <laughs> the thing is, here's where here's what I'm getting with that. The dude that freaked out at you and this yeah. dude and these Karens, there's something dark going on in their life. Well, okay. and, and they react to strangers because you can freak out at a family, whatever. There's a pre-established relationship. When you are willing to lose your mind in front of someone that you don't know, that's, that's, that is a Karen behavior to me. Two things we got to figure out in this episode, because what's the point in all this? One thing is we got to figure out the correct response. And as, as a Christian, yeah. which we're believers, we got to figure out the Jesus type response to yeah. these type of freakouts. And I think we can, we can weigh in on that. And it may not be perfect because we're not perfect people. We can weigh in on it. I, for the record, I don't necessarily think that the Jesus response is always to like I did, but if that's all you can do, it might work. Um, <laughs> So, but the, the other thing is how to, how to learn, I think maybe learn and sculpt these behaviors in your life, how to learn these responses, how to train yourself to, because one thing I don't think you can do as Christians is, is allow yourself, is allow yourself to just be a doormat, allow yourself right. to be walked Where's on. Where's the line? So I grew up being that way. I grew up never standing up for myself. I wanted to avoid confrontation because I had anger issues you know if i was if i was angry enough to get mad at you i was angry enough to, to beat the crud out of you or at least die trying kind of thing um and i realized very quickly that that was not a good way to be uh and so it took it's taken me a while to to process my emotions in the moment of a heated conversation it's taken me a while to get to a point where i can process those emotions dial it back and and continue to address the situation and there's a couple of learned behaviors. I think what you said originally is is what people need to start doing first and foremost. Standing up for your for what's right for you gains you more respect from the person, even if they're right. freaking out. Yeah, I feel like it gains a little bit more respect for them than if you just start yes. giving away. Uh, a friend of mine, our lead singer, he's he said this for a while. He said, when uh, he goes when kindness is when kindness is mistaken for weakness that's when he gets mad and he used to see me all the time i'd try to be kind to somebody in the situation and then they'd take it as weak oh weak so i can take advantage of them um so i think we need to figure out how to address these situations as a christian address these situations in a very jesus sort of way uh you can I, and maybe you can find that example by looking at the, some of the more sticky situations that jesus was in like uh, the one where he writes in the sand when they bring the woman right to him who's caught in adultery and they're like she needs to be stoned like they're ready to end this person's life that's a pretty hairy aggressive situation yeah. and they're looking to him they he understands the pressure of the situation because they're looking at him to, to to judge him based on his response if he responds in a way we don't like we'll stone him too mm -hmm. we'll accuse him of being a false prophet so what he does while they're the leaders of the church like Political leaders, essentially, and they are bringing this woman who's going to be stoned. He just dips down and starts doodling in the sand. I th I wonder how that would go over today with a Karen. Like if they just started going berserk and you just started ignoring them. Like uh, it's hard for me to think in my in my brain that that would de-escalate the situation. I think it might. But you think it might? Whatever I you did, that's genius, man. <laughs> like. I'm just, that's like, that just takes the ego out of it. And you're like, is this person something wrong with this person? I'm yelling at this person. Why am I yelling at this person? He just freaked out. Oh my gosh. Well, I've, I've thought that for Here's, a while. You don't know. You yeah. have to be careful because you don't know yeah. people. And if, yes, like, like, that's why the Karen thing like is talking so. talking at somebody who cuts you off in line. You don't know. That 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 dude may just or dude or chick yeah. or whoever may come out swinging, man. That's why the Karen thing is so 
ill-informed and for lack of a better word dumb is because the karen thing to me is ex- almost exclusively sh- go freaking out at strangers you don't know who are humans which are very dangerous yeah now that we're talking about these guy situations i'm i'm thinking of five or six situations with an older guy just so, like that that's happened Dude, I think the Jesus way to do it, honestly, and I'm not saying I'm perfect, but what I do is I aggressively, and I learned this in church leadership, okay. aggressively, kindly confront the situation where I'm like, stop. I need to figure out what the solution is here. Because you you confront their behavior and they know this dude's not going to take crap. Because initially in the first interaction, we ended very well. It was very yeah. aggressive, but it was, it was, it granted, I still paid, but they were like, oh, we're sorry, and blah, 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 blah. Still made me pay. Yeah. But it's like, I think what you have to do is you have to get to the truth. You need to be aggressive about it, but very kind. Do we need to try and come up with a label for the male Karen? Do we need to come up with a dude name, or is there already a dude name for the male my, Karen? My friend said it's a, it's a Sean with a S H A W N. Sean's too nice. I think it needs to be like like a Melvin or something like that. <laughs> a Melvin. A Melvin. Or oh, gosh. I Melvin a Dennis. Or uh, See, I know. See, I've only ever known nice Sean's too. It's weird. And Melvin's. And I've known him to Melvin's. And just... you, you've known a Melvin? <sighs> mm-hmm. uh, they do have a name for these. I already know. It's Dick. <laughs> well... <laughs> Maybe it's Mark. <laughs> and dude, here's the deal. There's no way to solve it because I think, okay, if we talk about the female Karen, in my opinion, the epitome of what's go- gone wrong, because there are plenty of women going through menopause that are and here's the deal. cool, calm. This is not, yeah, but this is not a sexist, I don't think this is a sexist thing because before you judge me when I say, does menopause have something to do with being a Karen, hear yeah. me out. What I'm trying to do is, is, uh, express compassion for that season of life yeah i'm trying to say during my wife's pregnancy when her hormones were going through the through through the roof yeah uh, me saying that that's a very difficult time for her is me trying to honor the situation and say i i'm not exactly sure what's going on with her while she's pregnant like i I can't figure that out i can't get pregnant myself Mm. and and i'm i'm wanting to not belittle the circumstance it's a huge ordeal she's growing a life inside her the same thing with menopause it's a big ordeal lots of hormonal changes in a woman i'm trying to honor that season of life and say look that may very well be what's causing some of these emotional outbursts in part it may be the biology of the time that you're going through that's what I'm trying to say. Not yeah. menopause and women stink. No, that's not what I'm saying. Well, and I, I think it's I think it's part of it. I think to me, I think the main thing is it's a woman who has been let down by men her whole life, and it's the guy who has been controlled by his wife and has slung his kids around for thirty years and now he doesn't have a relationship with his kids. He's got he's got no one else to to and to be to abuse or be authoritative over. He's, so he's and he's on the edge and like the other situation for an opportunity. He's in a swingers situation with his wife and he's so crazy. And the thing with the dude in the parking lot was it cost him three minutes of his day because I went right into that bank, I deposited my deal, mm-hmm. checked my balance, came right back out. I mean, it was three yeah. minutes tops. There was no line. And the guy's like, Blah! like just freaked the out correct me. response to you in that situation is, "Hey man, is this your car? No, but I know whose it is. Ah, well, they need to move it." And dude, it was night and day. <laughs> he, he came by, and I could tell he was stomping mad. But he's like, "Is this your car?" And I'm like, at, at first, if I'd have said no, he'd have been like, "Oh," and he would have moved on. But as soon as I was like, "No, but I know," who, like he just unleashed, uh, you know, released the hounds on me, and. uh People that do that too, generally, they just need to be confronted once. In that moment, they're not going to buck up. They're bully. They're bullies. That's what they are. Do you do you think the Jesus response? Do you think the Jesus response is to ignore them or to inject and see, be like, be be like, hey, 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 you can't talk to me like that. Aggressive, that nice response? confrontation. That's what it is. 
I, I just, I even with the maybe this doesn't have any relation, but when Jesus is in the temple and they're selling all the stuff and he takes the whip out. See, those are the two different aspects. You got one where they're bringing a woman to to. That's a very sticky situation. Bringing a woman to stone her, and he he just doodles and says, and then he and then he gives a spiel. He who's without sin cast the first stone. Uh, but he and, saves her, and he saved her. He diffused the situation. Uh, but in the other instance, and I I, I love. The Jesus, I love the the whip plaiting, table turning Jesus. I love that because that's the Jesus where I'm like, listen, he stands up for what's right even when it's incredibly uncomfortable. Mm. You know, he flips the tables right there in the church and says, I know you guys have the power to stone me, you know, and all this kind of hoopla, yeah. but I'm going to do this anyways. And that's the, those are the aspects of Jesus' personality that I love. So my question is, is the correct response, should we as Christians, followers of peace, because scripture says pursue peace with all men is the response to ignore somebody in that circumstance it comes at you hard or is the response more to i know the response isn't to go go aggressively angry and be like no. don't you yell at me yell. i know that's not to let let loose the inner inner madness inside that's not well and it just i mean on you it can take it to the next level yeah. but honestly with like Karen's and the whatever the Melvin's, male, or, Melvin's. Or if Richards. you if you go to ten with them, they're like they're a bully. But all bullies are cowards, dude. Like they'll jump back down and be like, oh, so like what that guy did. Oh. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. My advice to anybody is if you if you can't if you don't know yourself, know yourself. I think, and if you're not somebody who's good in those confrontations, maybe you have to take it one step at a time. Maybe Call igno- Cliff. maybe ignoring them is your first step. Like if you can tell they're starting to push your buttons, yeah. maybe doodling in the sand and ignoring them and just not listening to a thing they say is your first step towards getting where you can engage with them. Uh, maybe that's it. But maybe you're in a position with enough practice that you can be like, hey, 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 we get nowhere if you talk to me like that. We get nowhere. That is the best. Now, granted, you could do the other thing. If you can get to that one, you just call out the truth and when people are being aggressive like we get nowhere until you calm down yes you you that's that's what i call the that's the stopping point in a confrontation you lay out the ground rules what's the worst thing that's going to happen you get nowhere maybe the ability to call them out say hey if you want to rage yeah. i'm not going to listen yeah and you have to say it loud if you, you don't want to yell i don't hear you yeah i'm not here forget it yeah if you want me to respect you ditch the rage and if they come back with more rage i think maybe at that point you're like well get in the car and drive off or be like well adios check out and and you have to be willing i think you have to be willing to not care about what that one person's opinion of you actually is if they're freaking out at you and you and you want them to like you so bad that you're willing to do everything, well, then you're just going to get walked on. Mm. You're going to be a pushover. But I think in that moment, man, just realize the situation. You got somebody who's freaking out at you for nothing, yeah. and it's time to, to just to accept it for what it is. Like You don't care, honestly. And it sounds callous, but at that point, I don't really – I did not care what that dude's opinion of me was. And if I'm being real, I've been hoping – I would look. I was looking for an opportunity to just go to eleven with somebody in this weird, goofy, freak out way. I mean, like, I'm the kind of guy that might have something written on my on my belly or something like that, and for yeah. those kind of situations, just pull it up and be like, ah! have like a monstrous face painted on my belly, just to sh- just to be completely. Because I just don't care, man. Like, I really don't care what this person thinks of me or what they think of me. And maybe that's bad. Maybe I need to care a little more so I can be more like Jesus. And, he's and- he's watching TBN late on a sunday night he's like hey it's that guy it's clear man like i knew that i tell my grandkids that story